If you're watching this video, odds are you've heard of Spinosaurus. That was a stupid sentence, how could you not have heard of Spinosaurus? Egypt's most terrifying dinosaur was launched to fame by the release of Jurassic Park 3 in 2001, captivating audiences, or enraging them, as an oversized sailback juggernaut. In 2014, the creature created controversy with Ibrahim's revolutionary reconstruction of Spinosaurus as a short-legged fish eater. Ever since that study was released and made the title page of National Geographic, debates have raged between paleontology fans about its iconic appearance. Here we analyze the most updated and rigorous information to figure out Spino's final form. Unfortunately, I can't guarantee there's no blue hair. So, Ibrahim's team traveled to the Kem Kem beds of eastern Morocco on a now legendary dinosaur hunt. They actually made several trips, retrieving different portions from the same individual. The new remains come from a site with just one individual. Also remember that there are only two other associated dinosaur skeletons from the Kem Kem assemblage mentioned in the literature. It's definitely not the kind of place where lots of associated skeletons are found. And additional remains of the same animal were found at the site on return expeditions, including partial spines, teeth, and other elements. Know also that the thin sections we made represent the same ontogenetic stage that includes the first remains collected and those collected later expeditions. Excerpt from Ibrahim replied to Scott Hartman. On top of that, Ibrahim's team examined the material many times from the tiniest zygapophyses to the most fragmentary rib pieces. This includes hundreds of Spinosaurus bones belonging to nearly half a dozen specimens, all scaled with the same proportions. They actually referred to two associate skeletons that were separately reconstructed as the short limbed semi aquatic model. However, in February 2017, Andrea Cow performed a detailed analysis of Spino's center of gravity and found that it could have utilized its long, broad tail as a counterbalance to successfully move bipedally with the short legs in the Ibrahim reconstruction. So the fully updated posture has Spinosaurus with short hind limbs, swimming, but capable of walking on land, similar to other theropods. That's fairly conclusive evidence, but that's only one aspect of Spinosaurus that we've learned more about. What else do the new studies tell us? Hendricks et al., 2016, and Evers et al., 2015, Reanalyzed Sigil Mosasaurus in depth, concluding that it was a separate animal and that Abraham's reconstruction was not a chimera. What I personally find more interesting are the biomechanical theories put forth. Jim Saw et al., 2015, compared the dorsal sail of Spinosaurus to that of a sailfish or swordfish, increasing its hydrodynamicity and balance capabilities. That's hard to say. Hydrodynamicity. That would have reduced vibrations generated by the dinosaur's movement, making it more difficult to detect while on the hunt. Hendricks et al. also discussed its skull physiology. Spinosaurus's enlarged mandibular symphysis allowed it to extend its jaw and slide fish into its throat pelican style. And according to Paul Serino, who was on Brahim's team, its feet were perfectly adapted to a piscivorous or semi-piscivorous lifestyle. The feet were wide, four-toed, and flat, Serino said, useful for moving over soft, silty mud. A cross-section of the bones revealed them to be solid, something unheard of in generally hollow-bone theropods, but useful for staying submerged. And if that isn't enough to convince you of its river-going status, in 2010, a study was performed investigating the oxygen isotope ratios in spinosaurus teeth. Romain Amio found that the ratios were closer to crocodiles and turtles than other theropods, but still in between, meaning that it could go between environments if it needed to. But we're all familiar with the monstrous size of spinosaurus, aren't we? How could such a massive predator sustain itself on river fare? First off, the prey in Cenomanian Egypt rivers was gigantic. We're talking fish the size of cars here. Second off, Spinosaurus is nowhere near as large as fanboys would have you believe. Andrea Cal writes that it was more gracile than the other megatheropods, not the colossal monster, often touted by forums, and Ibrahim's team agrees. They volumetrically analyzed their short-legged construction, putting it at 50 feet long and 6 to 7 metric tons. That's still gigantic, especially considering that their skeleton wasn't completely grown. It's not unreasonable to say that a fully adult Spinosaurus could push 8 tons, and exceptionally large individuals might have reached 9 tons and 55 or more feet. The newest, most rigorous estimates are so much smaller than the 70-foot, 12-ton fanboy claims because they were based on a much more complete skeleton and used more accurate methods. So that is Spino's final form, for now, of course. If you have any information I missed, please let me know in the comments below, and look forward for more paleontology news. Created using Powtoon.